A U.S. court has issued a summons against the Saudi crown prince in relation to a former intelligence agent, Saad al-Jabri. The court order also covers a dozen other people, including residents of the U.S. Saad al-Jabri filed a lawsuit accusing the Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, of sending a hit squad to kill him two years ago. He's now in Canada, where police and private security guards are reported to be giving him increased protection. Abdulaziz al muyad is a Saudi human rights activist. He says Saudi Arabia is putting itself in a vulnerable position. What Mohammed bin Salman is doing is no good for nobody because a destabilization in Saudi Arabia is a very dangerous situation. I was born and lived in Riyadh. Riyadh has six million people. If any trouble happened in the system, Riyadh couldn't even drink water because we get uh, our water from the Red Sea and from the Arabian Gulf. So Saudi Arabia is a very, in a very vulnerable state. And having a leader like Mohammed bin Salman is not taking things to uh, a more safe uh, state. Also, we've seen that Mohammed bin Salman talking about uh, starting relations with China and America. So the old, uh, old alliance between America and Saudi Arabia is not even valued by Saudi uh, uh, regime. Mohammed bin Salman is willing to work with the Americans or the European or whoever with them, uh, whoever are, in, in the following term. That how much are they willing to look away on undemocratic uh, behavior and criminal uh, cr uh, war crimes? If anybody is not willing to play his game, he will cut relations. He really don't care. OK, let's stay with this story. Joining us live, Bruce Fine, formerly a U.S. Associate Deputy Attorney General. He's talking to us out of Washington. Bruce, good to get your thoughts on this developing story as ever. Issuing a summons, what does that mean? Well, the summons delivers the complaint to the various defendants that obligates them under our federal rules to answer within 20 days. Uh, so it means that now the case is gearing up uh, 20 days is not a long time, uh, but I think uh, having myself litigated many cases under the Torture Victim Protection Act, that it signals that MBS will now vigorously lobby President Trump and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to issue what's called a letter of suggestion of immunity. It's rather an uh, odd uh, 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 realm of, of law. But basically, it asked the court to dismiss a case because it would interfere with the foreign relations of the United States and relations with a head of state or high-level officials. Uh, it is not required that a court accept a suggestion of immunity by the State Department, but the cases I've litigated, they've given great deference to it. But that means that November will be critical for Saudi Arabia. Uh, under that doctrine, uh, President Biden could revoke any suggestion of immunity and reinstate the case. Uh, but I can guarantee you, right now, uh, Saudi Arabia and the Crown Prince are talking his head off with Pompeo and Trump, get me out of this conundrum. OK, a letter of immunity, Bruce, does that cover the case or cases yet to come, or does it cover the individual, i.e., does it give MBS blanket immunity from anything that may yet also, as well as this, be coming down the line? A suggestion of immunity only covers the particular case, so it wouldn't reach any other lawsuits against MBS, and it wouldn't reach criminal cases against MBS. A suggestion of immunity is relevant only in a civil case where you're seeking damages. So it's not a get-out-of-jail card free for all time. It sounds as if this will be a long, drawn-out legal process overlaid with clearly kind of like politicization of the relationship between the Trump administration and the powers that be in Riyadh. Yes, I believe that's true. Uh, but remember, we have an election in November, and the relationship could be dramatically altered if Mr. Biden wins the election. I think the consensus in Washington is the only true friend, if you want to call it that, since Mr. Trump really doesn't have friends, he's narcissistic and does things for himself. But the only advocate for Saudi Arabia in all of Washington is President Trump and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. There are no members of Congress that champion Saudi Arabia. 
There are no other members of the administration. In fact, the intelligence community is outraged at what happened to Mr. Al Jabri because he was an informant and intelligent asset for him. Uh, but Mr. Trump has given little uh, weight to the intelligence community. He's actually derided it from time to time. But because the lawsuit is protracted, uh, the November elections loom very large in its ultimate outcome. And is there another factor to this which makes it inherently different to what happened in terms of international law and legality and the application of that law when we discussed, you and I discussed for a long time over the period of many weeks and months, the death of Jamal Khashoggi, and it's this. The allegation seems to suggest, and I say, I stress seems, that some of this failed operation, some of the planning took place on American soil because they went to try to get into Canada literally two security guards, they got a, a red warning flag for some reason and they were denied access to Canada. So they were on American soil when this was still in the planning before it got to the, the execution of it. Well, that is a critical difference uh, because in Khashoggi case, all of the actual action was either in Saudi Arabia or in Turkey. But there's another element that's very important for U.S. law. And that is the allegations are that the wrong, if you will, the attempted assassination was targeted at the United States because it was seeking to disrupt a relationship with the United States intelligence community. So it had a purposeful impact on the United States intelligence community. That is important because there's a previous case I was involved in against Osama bin Laden relating to the embassy bombings in Nairobi and Tanzania. And there the court upheld jurisdiction over Osama bin Laden because it was said, even though the explosions and the terrorism was in foreign countries, it was directed at the United States and to frighten and terrorize the United States. And I think that's what gives this particular case much stronger legs than a suit by Mr. Khashoggi. OK, we must leave it there, Bruce. Good to talk to you, Bruce Fine, the former U.S. Associate Deputy Director in Washington. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you.